Hello, welcome back to Crypto Bible. My name's Oliver, and today I have another episode for you about cryptocurrency news. Now, today's episode's all going to be about the current crypto crash that we're all experiencing at the moment, giving us a little bit of an insight into why it's crashed and how long we're going to have to wait. So let's jump straight into the first news story that I want to present to you guys. Here we have one from Forbes, and the tagline reads, Looking ugly, crypto market crash intensifies after $300 billion hundred dollars uh, sell off. How low can Bitcoin prices go? That's the question we all want to know. The price of Bitcoin fell to a three month low Monday morning, continuing a slide that began when the Federal Reserve sparked a broad sell off last week by cautioning it may move more quickly than previously expected to reverse policy meant to bolster the economy during the pandemic. And experts forecast the latest crypto drawback could persist for weeks if the central bank's hawkish stance becomes more aggressive. So we're hearing a lot about the Fed, about them uh, raising interest rates, and we're seeing that a lot in the market. So let's move on down. Some of the key facts. Bitcoin fell as much as 5% to $39,692 by 9.45 a.m. ET, according to crypto data, uh, CoinGecko, the website bringing its losses to more than 12% since the Fed warned on Wednesday it may move more aggressively to remove, to remove pandemic-era stimulus as it looks to combat high levels of inflation. Uh, in a weekend email, analyst uh, Hasegawa, I think I said that right, of cryptocurrency broker Bitwell's cryptocurrency could continue falling until the broader market, which has similarly struggled since the Fed's Wednesday announcement digests the likelihood of Fed hiking interest rates as soon as March. He also said Bitcoin could fall as low as $40,000 in the near term and cautioned government's consumer price index report due out Wednesday could intensify the price weakness if it shows inflation spiked more than expected, further justifying the Fed's decision to ease the stimulus and raise those rates. In a Monday note, uh, Marcus, an analyst at UK-based digital asset brokers Global Bank, said he expects Bitcoin will hover around $40,000, even if the CPI report on Wednesday shows inflation and rose more quickly than expected last month, positioning the recent sell-off has likely priced in much of the negative expectations. So what he's saying here is, obviously, the Fed came out with their notes. It's dropped. There's been a big sell-off, and then other people have seen that there's a big sell-off. So then they're saying, hang on a minute. I'm going to get out and sell mine too. So it's kind of a big negative ball that's, that's continuous to roll. And on Thursday, crypto billionaire Mike Novogratz told the CEO Financial Times, Galaxy Digital, that the sell-off could push Bitcoin down another 8% from current prices to as low as $38,000, a level that has been unseen since early August. But he also said, I'm not nervous in the medium term, but we're going to have a lot of volatility in the next few weeks. The staunch Bitcoin bull said to CNBC before pointing to booming institutional adoption as a bullish indicator for the nascent space. Bitcoin was far from alone in falling Monday morning over the past 24 hours. Ether, Binance and Sol were down as much as 5%, pushing losses to roughly 20% apiece over the last week. How long is this going to continue for? How long do you think? How many weeks? Someone let us know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. What to watch out for? Though Fed officials last month said they project only three interest rate hikes this year. Goldman Sachs chief economist uh, Jan Hatcher said Monday he expects the central bank will actually hike interest rates four times. That's very interesting. So he thinks that they're going to raise the interest rates four times this year, given a greater sense of urgency than previously in the Fed's Wednesday announcement. So he predicts another hike. Bitcoin remains vulnerable to a breach of this $40,000 level, and it could get bad for Ether if it breaks the $3,000 level. Uh, Ed Moyer wrote in a Friday email from here. Ether uh, prices clocked in at around 2985 on Monday in dollars. The long-term outlook is still bullish for both the top two cryptocurrencies, but the short term is looking ugly. That Novogratz said a big number here 1.9 trillion that's the value of all the world's cryptocurrencies down more than 300 billion dollars or 14 percent uh 
percent since Wednesday and more than one trillion dollars below an all time high of three trillion dollars back in November 2021. And here's a surprising fact. Over the last five years, Bitcoin prices have skyrocketed nearly 4,300%. However, the cryptocurrency is down nearly 40% from a record of $69,000 set in November. Let me show you the next article. Here we go. Next article is from Coindesk. Bitcoin dips below $40,000 as death cross looms on price charts. If you don't don't know what a death cross is, I'm going to show you. Here it is on the chart. So we can see an impending death cross and the death cross right here on the right side of the chart. Now, they call it a Bitcoin's death cross, a bearish indicator that appears when the 50 day moving average dips below the 200 day moving average. The ominously named chart pattern looks set to be confirmed this week amid mounting concerns of faster liquidity withdrawal by the U.S. Federal Reserve, a bearish development for Bitcoin and asset prices in general. Bitcoin price dipped briefly on Monday, $40,000 since September. At the time of press on this article, the largest cryptocurrency by market cap was changing hands at 40834 on Coindesk pricing, down 12% so far in 2022. One of Bitcoin's worst ever starts to a year. Um, you know, we haven't even started the year much, really, have we? So, it's big, big news. Goldman Sachs foresees the Fed raising borrowing costs, costs at least four times. So we're hearing that again from another article, at least four times by the end of 22 versus its previous prediction of three rate hikes, according to Bloomberg. The investment banking giant also expects the central bank to downsize its balance sheet from July. Friday's labor market uh, report showed that an employment rate dipped to 3.9% and strengthened the case for the Fed to hike rates concurrently with the end of the asset purchases in March, according to CME Group's Fed Watch tool. Investors were pricing a tw- 73 probability of 25 basis point rate hike in March, up 61% from last week. Fears of a hawkish Fed grip the Bitcoin market toward the end of last quarter after the central bank shifted its focus to inflation. Control from maximum employment. In December, the Fed announced at least three rate hikes by the end of 2022 and an end of the asset purchase program by March. It doesn't look good for the near future, does it? Bitcoin peaked near $69,000 on November 10th and has declined since for 40% since. The cryptocurrency slipped over 12% in the last seven days, registering its biggest weekly drop since early December. That said, the technical indicator's past record as a predictor of bear markets is mixed. According to research by Kraken, many of Bitcoin's previous death crosses, including those seen in 2014 and 18, coincided with either a sell-off in the days that followed or a continued macro downtrend that confirmed a bear market. However, death cross crosses witnessed last June and late March and October in 2020 and 2019 were bear traps or false signals that marked major price bottoms. The consolidation seemed seen after the mid-June death cross resolved in a fresh bull run as seen in the featured image. Moving across, moving average crossovers are unreliable and standalone as a standalone indicator, given that they are based on backward looking data and tend to lag prices. The market is often oversold and due for a bounce by the time the crossover is confirmed, as was the case in June last year and late March 2020. Okay, let's have a look at the final news report I've got for you guys. Okay, here's the last article. So we've got tagline, crypto diehards are about to find out if it really was a bubble. Rock bottom rates and trillions of dollars in government stimulus help turbocharge prices of digital assets. But can the market hold up without them? So here it just explains what they mean by saying it's a bubble. To cryptocurrency true believers, Bitcoin is the ultimate store of value, the most solid hedge against the rampant inflation manufactured by reckless central banks and their money printing. And skeptics, to skeptics, the crypto world as a whole is a mirage whose massive run up past $2 trillion was simply the speculative byproduct of the extraordinary amount of easy cash that's been sloshing around in the global economy. In effect, a big bubble. Both of those theories are about to face their biggest test yet. Bitcoin, the original cryptocurrency, has emerged more than 
a decade ago, out of the ashes of the global financial crisis as a bypass to the banks and government agencies murdered in Wall Street's great calamity at the time. The digital token steadily gained a following, inspired a rash of wannabes and endured some wild rides. Yes, it has. But it wasn't until the next big crisis, COVID-19, that the market really took off. So again, crypto exploded after March 2020 when the Federal Reserve and Congress unleashed trillions of dollars worth of stimulus to blunt the pandemic's economic blow. A bunch of cash made its way into digital assets, turbocharging the prices, and Bitcoin soared 305% in 2020 and notched another 60% the following year. It's not looking good so far. Bitcoin is already down some 40% from its highs, while number two, Ether and other old coins have also suffered steep declines. They're just given a bit of a sort of a, a backlog here about what's happened in the past for new readers and just showing them the big highs and now, you know, how it's fallen. So here it says if they're going to hike rates three times in 2022 and keep the program and the year of low rates is over, we're going to really see how much people believed in their Bitcoin crypto thesis, said Stephanie Ouellette, chief executive and co-founder of crypto platform FRNT Financial Inc., I would expect that the Fed getting more and more hawkish is very bad for valuations. And then we've got Michael O'Rourke, who's a chief market strategist at Jones Trading, agrees. The Federal Reserve seemingly perpetual asset purchases have been the cornerstone for crypto investing. Should the central bank follow the path laid out in its latest minutes release, which showed that Fed officials are going to be prepared to move faster than expected to lift those interest rates and potentially shrink the bank's balance sheet? then that would immediately undermine the key bullish thesis behind Bitcoin and many other cryptos. So for most of its 13-year history, Bitcoin has enjoyed an environment of easy monetary policy and zero or negative rates. While there's no straight line from the Fed's coffers to Bitcoin buy orders on, on exchanges, there is a connection. So according to Tave, David Towell, president of ProChain Capital, for one, the Fed buying any type of asset can have a ripple effect and lift prices of other investments. All the buying power, all the investable power that exists has to go somewhere, he said. With rates of rock bottom lows, investors have been forced to scour the market for higher yielding opportunities and many turned to crypto, given its ability to post outsizable gains. Think of a junk bond investor who has been accustomed to single digit returns even on bad days, and he's going to be forced to put his money into something riskier, but more importantly, something that yields something he is used to be getting. So what happens when the financial conditions become tighter? The initial move is the opposite of what we just spoke about. Everything's going to go and swing the other way until things settle down. That's why you have this immediate reaction in the market, because everyone's anticipating that the money is going to leave the riskier stuff. The last time the US central bank raised rates was December 2018. And its final increase in a series of hikes. Back then, Bitcoin was trading around $3,700. And concepts such as decentralized finance and non-fungible tokens were years away from entering the vernacular. It turned out to be a rough year for the original cryptocurrency, particularly towards the end when it lost, when Bitcoin lost 40% during the last two months. A period that also coincided with a walloping in US stocks. Here we see a little chart, uh, graph here. And that dynamic is playing out again now. So we've heard, we keep seeing in these news articles, the Fed, the Fed, the Fed, raising, you know, not three times, but four times in uh, raising those prices. And it's playing out again now. Bitcoin falling in step with richly valued equities ahead of an expected new round of Fed tightening, says Peter uh, Bukhvar. Chief Investment Officer at Bleakly Advisory Group and editor of the book report. He says, for now, it's going to be proving just a risk on risk off asset. He said, I expect to trade with other risk assets in response to Fed tightening. He compared the digital coin to Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF, which is seen as the ultimate risk asset and which also has been proven highly sensitive to Fed tightening as investors start to pay more attention to valuations. Bitcoin, though, remains a supreme shapeshifter. It's represented many things for people far of more than a decade now and is often contradictory. Narratives will continue to evolve. After all, it's been written off time and time again as dead, denounced as rat's poison and castigated as a bubble, only to come back stronger each time. 
As an institutional ad adoption increases, Bitcoin's futures may also become clearer, says Max Gorkman, chief investor at AlphaTrail, which is working on the application of its artificial intelligent algorithms for the digital asset space. We shouldn't discount that in the future, Bitcoin use, uh, that the use cases may evolve to where it reinvents itself and gains importance anew, he said. Very interesting, very negative kind of stories there. So my question to you guys is, reading those articles, what do you think? Do you think this is kind of a media push on people trying to come out of, you know, cryptocurrency and seeing, we keep seeing that Federal Reserve pop up in all three news articles, don't we? And it just dipping and dipping and dipping. And we're seeing a lot of the media now report on this to try and scare and panic people to pull out. And then we see a huge sell and then we think, oh, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And then you see a huge sell and then we think, hang on a minute. People are going, I'm going to sell. And then it it dramatically increases. So it, it in my personal opinion, it does seem that we're going to see a little bit more of a of a consolidation. It just Bitcoin sitting at the sort of same price, going a thousand down, a thousand up, not really making much of a move. And the same with the altcoins until we get something else happen within the market. But at the moment, it doesn't look like it's going to be moving much. What are your thoughts, guys? Are you just sticking out? Are you just going to hodl away and forget about all the, the things the media are trying to throw in our face right now? We've seen those articles. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you for joining me for the news episode today. As always, throw me a like. Comment down below what you think. Get yourself subbed. Get those notifications on. More stories yet to come out on our channel. And once again, I just want to say thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.